my name is Nicole Engard, and I am the Director of Open Source Education at Bywater Solutions. Today's tutorial is going to show you how to use Mark Edit to add item records for importing into Koha. Mark Edit is a free tool that you can download on the internet that allows you to edit Mark records in batches or individually without needing an ILS or cataloging tool. So I use MarkEdit to add information into Mark Records when it's not there, before I import it into my Koha installation. For example, I have a file on my desktop of Mark Records provided to me by one of my book vendors. So I've placed an order with them, they've provided me a batch of Mark Records, but those Mark Records don't have items attached. So I'm going to use MarkEdit to create some basic item records in this file before I import it into Koha. So here's my file. I'm going to click on this and open it up. This opens up Mark Edit, and what I want to do is I want to use my Mark Breaker. The file is an MRC file. It's a Mark file. It's a text file that isn't very readable by us if we were to open it and look at it. The Mark Breaker in Mark Edit allows you to break it down into fields so that you can easily read it. So I'm going to click Execute. And what it's done is it's found 23 records. I'm going to click Edit to edit those records. So when we look at it here, um, we can see each of the fields has its own line. And if we scroll down, there's a, a break in between each record, so we can see the breakdown of the records. Koha stores item information in the 952 field. And these mark records do not have a 952 field. So I need to add one with the basic information in order to import it into Koha. So I'm going to come up here to Tools, and I'm going to choose to add or delete a field. In this case, I want to add a field. I want to add the 952. And there are some standard subfields that Koha requires. It needs to know the location, it needs to know your classification, and it needs to know the item type. So subfield A is the owning branch. Subfield B is the current branch. Subfield Y is your item type, and subfield 2 is your classification. Now, you'll notice I've put in a whole bunch of codes here. What you need, and I have a little typo there, I'll change this. What you need to do is put in the codes for your branches, the code for your item type, and the code for your classification scheme. You don't want to spell these things out, or else Koha just will not understand them. So my branch name is Nicole's Branch, but the code for it is NIC. And that's what I've put in here. The item type is book, but my code is BK. And my classification is Library of Congress, but that is LCC. So once I've put in all the subfields I want for my 952, I click Add Field. It tells me 23 fields were added, and if you remember, we had 23 files in there, so that sounds about right. I'm going to close this, and I'm just going to confirm. So you look down here, here's the 952ABY2. Awesome, that's just what I want. And I can scroll down and I can see the same thing on all of these. Now there is some data that's not consistent through all of the fields. Um, for example, a call number. The call number is going to be pulled from a st different field depending on your classification. I'm using Library of Congress, so I want to pull the call number from the 050. And I can do this in Mark Edit by using the Swap Fields tool. So I'm going to come here and do Swap Field Data. And what I want is I want to pull 050 subfield A and B. And I don't want to find anything particular. And I want to move it to 952 subfield O. Now, I don't actually want to move it because I still want that to stay in the mark record, so I'm going to choose to copy the source. What this will do is it'll leave it in the 050 and it'll pull it down into my subfield O for my item as well. I want to add it to an existing field as well. If I don't do this, then it's going to put a whole other 952 onto the record, and that's going to count to Koha as two items. So we don't want that. We want it to add it to the existing field. All right. Once we've got everything selected, we click Process, and we've got 23 modifications again, so that's right. We say OK, close this. Come up here and take a look just real quick at the, the 050. Scroll down, and here is subfield O, and it's the same call number. It's put it in there for me, um, taken the two subfields, put it into one in my mark record. So now, 
I have mark record with the branch information, the item information, my classification, a unique call number for each one of these pulled out of the mark record. It may change at a later date, but I at least have the data in there for now. And all that's left is I forgot to put on a status. So these are items that I've just ordered from my book vendor, and I want to import them into Koha with a status of on order so that my patrons know these books are coming, but they're not here yet. On order status is also easy to add. In fact, I could have added it when I added the field, but I just happened to forget. And that's a good thing because now I can show you how to go about doing it if you forget to add a subfield. So we want to go back to our tools menu again, and this time we'd like to edit subfield data. I know we're adding a subfield, but there isn't an add subfield option, so we're going to use the edit subfield tool. And we're going to say we want to do 952 subfield 7. That's where the ordered status goes. It's actually where the not for loan status goes, but ordered is one of the not for loan statuses. It's asking me if I want to look for specific data and replace it, but I don't because it's a new field. So I'm going to ignore the field data box. I'm going to go to replace with and choose negative 1. Negative 1 is the status for on order. You can find out what the codes are by going to your administration area in Koha and looking in the authorized values section. So um, I'm going to say add the subfield if it's not present. So like I said, we're not actually editing, we're adding. So we need it to add the subfield if it's not present. And we're going to click replace text, even though, once again, we're not replacing anything. Am I sure? Yes. And 23 modifications were made. So the number is still right there. Close this, scroll down to my 952, and if I take a look, there's a subfield 7 of negative 1 on all of my 952s. The order of the subfields in this MARC file don't matter. Koha will put them in the right place when it comes in. What does matter is that the required fields are there, and the required subfields are A, B, Y, and 2. Koha needs those in order to import these records, so make sure you have them. Other subfields can, are defined in the manual. If you want to add additional information, you can, but for on-order records, I've created a nice item here that uh, should work just fine in Koha. So I'm going to um, save my file made changes to it, and then I'm going to compile this file to MARC. This allows it to be imported into Koha. Remember, we broke the MARC when we brought it in to MARC Edit so that we could work with it. So now we're going to compile it into a MARC file, call it whatever you want, um, and then save it. Once you've done that and you have the file, you can now go about the steps to import this into your Koha installation. Um, these steps will work for any version of Koha 3.0 and above. Once again, my name is Nicole Engard, and this has been a Bywater Solutions production. Visit us on the web at www.bywatersolutions.com.